Hello guys and welcome to this video. Today I'm going to show you how to use this pyro, uh, this new pyro system with uh, yeah pyro simulations that you can do in the new version of Cinema 4D, the 2023 version. Yeah, how to use this kind of simulations in Octane and uh, how to render this. And yeah, for this I have a little scene in here. It's just simple like this one. And now now I'm going to show you how to use that. Um, yeah. For the start, I just go into my Octane. Yeah, for the, for the specs, I use the Octane Studio Plus version, uh, 2022.1. And yeah, I go for Path Tracer. So as you can see, if you start to render it, you see nothing. Um, I do a little thing that I do always when I start a new project. I set the GI claim to something like one. You could also go for something like higher, like five or something, but uh, yeah, one million is way too much. So I go to for one, go, I go to camera imager, sorry, I forgot it to <laughs> uh, switch this in here. So if I, I go to the GI clamp to one and I go to the camera imager and set the OCIO to ASUS Rec 709. If you don't uh, be familiar with uh, this kind of uh, settings, this is the ASUS color workflow. I already did a video about that. Um, yeah, it's something like a color range that is a little bit higher than uh, sRGB or something else that you can use, or the HDR. Yeah, HDR sRGB. Um, yeah, for this I use this one, and uh, if you yeah want to see how to install it, uh, maybe you check out the video where I explain it later, uh, I explain it deeper, or maybe you check it out on YouTube and search for ASUS OCIO color workflow. It's really easy to use. Uh, for the rest of the settings I do nothing, but I think it's really important, uh, especially for something like uh, pyro simulations that we go for the ASUS workflow, because um, yeah, you have a deeper color range or a higher color range for something like this and yeah for the pyro simulation we go for right click in the pyro default and we go for i don't know why they, they changed that but you need to go to extensions if you have i don't know version where that is not happening you go to for something like uh i think it's only cinema 4d or octane um tags but yeah as you can see you can go for uh, this one in here. If you don't find it, just right click, go for Octane, and then you can find it. And we need the Octane camera uh, object tag. And as you can see, now something is happening. And maybe we go for something like uh, HDRI. For the HDRI, I just use the Grayscale Gorilla HDRI Plus. It's a really good plugin where you have some example. So now we have everything done in here, and as you can see, it renders really slow. That's a big problem of Cinema's uh, Octane, because in Octane, mm, a big, uh, yeah, Bro. Uh, the problem is the big bo uh, bottleneck of Octane is that you can't render that uh, fast volume metrics. That's always a problem in Octane. I don't know why that's happening, but yeah, it's it's really hard to do that because uh, it decreases your render time really, really hard. And if you go to particle rendering in your Octane object tag, you can go for voxel, that's right, and you can use motion blur as well, velocity scale, and you have this, um, yeah, uh, volume medium in here. It's something like, uh, you know, like the thing that you have when you use a VDB or a fog volume. And yeah, but you have uh, many, many, many channels in here. You can use for the des um, density channel uh, and the color scattering channel and everything you can use. So in here you can use your different channels and you can also use a interpolation to calculate this different or go for density like one and then it is less dense and if you go for back to 20 you could also go for the volume step, le step length if you set this up more down uh, you have a, a better resolution of your of your um, of your 
uh, voxels, but you also have a longer render time. So if you set this up more to something like 400, as you can see, <laughs> it's less dense, uh, less dense because uh, yeah, you have less voxels that are calculated or they are calculated bigger, and your render time is not that high. But as you can see, you just have a little bit of dots in there. So you could also go for something like 1000 in here and less in here. As you can, it's not working that well. So you need to find a sweet spot where you have a volume step, length, step length that is not too high or something like this. So yeah, it's important that we go for something like 10 in here, 2 in here, or something like 4 in here. And we 40 because it's not that much dense. 10. Scatter, wait, we do something like less. It's not that much bright. I mission you could also use different channels like the density, then everything in the density is uh yeah something like the emission mode so if you have something like f fire or fog that is bright, you could use something like this, but it looks not that much good, so you could use the different channels like the uh like the temperature, so the fire itself as the uh, as the uh, it's the mode that have emission on it and it's uh, it's glowing. And on the bottom, you could go for the temperature. So if you go for something like the density of one hundred, you have brighter fire. And in the Kelvin part, you can go for something like uh, colder or brighter fire. And as you can see, it changes in here. So let's set up the Let's set up this uh, fire simulation correctly, that it looks good. Um, after I playing a little bit around with the settings and everything, I got the right settings for the viewport. So now it's looking almost like it's in the viewport. You could also go for more resolution if you go for a volume stack length. Uh, I show you my settings a little bit. Um, I use this uh, method in here. I use the 30 density, a volume stack length of uh, 0.16. Uh, also in here, no displacement, in the scatter I use something like a white, you could also go for something like black. Um, and this color here is uh, depending on the fog or the outer fog on here, as you can see. And if you go so for something like white or a middle color in the gray square range in here, as you can see you have something like, uh, yeah, this color that is shown up here. You could also go for something like a pink color, as you can see the fog is now something like pink and yeah, it's something like the out of fog color that you can uh, use in here. In transparent I use uh, nothing, it's something like, you know, you could use a channel that you can type in here as example density and if I type in density in here, uh, <laughs> everything is completely fucked because uh, it makes my density channel transparent and I don't want to have that. In the emission part, you can go for uh, also channels. If you go for a channel, you could type one in here, and you could use uh, yeah a color or something, or you could go for black body, and then it uses this type of thing in here, and um, yeah, you could also go for density. Then the density is completely black or white. It's a color in here, and uh, yeah, now I have it on black body emission temperature here is the lightning pass and uh, yeah on the temperature I could use something like a slider for the different steps of the 
yeah, the color or the heat or the emission itself. And yeah, here's the channel for the temperature. And then you can go for Kelvin or for something like uh, like uh, body density in here. And uh, yeah, use this for the emission strength and how bright the light is. You could also go for something like 100 and, and it's uh, way brighter than before, but I use something like this. You could also use it for, for the Kelvin thing, but as you can see, if I go for something like lower, we have a reddish color or a darker color. And if you go for something like higher, yeah, you have something like this, but I want to have this back to my old settings and as example, if we create a camera, go in it and we go for something like like uh, bloom for the highlights if we set this up a little bit for something like uh 60 we have brighter areas that are uh, noticed from the bloom effect ah, I, I expected that would works better but my as you can see my floor is a little bit too bright maybe Maybe we just delete it because it's a bright color and everything. And yeah, now you can see we only have this bright areas and it's glowing that much. And yeah, that's how you set this up for uh, use pyro simulation for uh, yeah something like it looks in the viewport. I hope that helps you a little bit. And yeah, this is the end of the video. I hope you like it. Uh, maybe you check it. Uh, check my last video out where I go a little bit deeper into the pyro simulation that is coming uh, yeah, in this new version of Cinema 4D, the 2023 version. And um, yeah, maybe you like this video. Maybe you check out my channel and uh, watch my other other tutorials. Um, yeah, maybe you have some tutorial ideas or something that I should show to you and write this in the comments. And yeah, goodbye, guys.